Get your Bible in your hand. Let's have our confession. Say, Father, Father I, thank you I thank you for loving me. For loving me. I, thank you I thank you for the Word of God. Word of God. I, am I am what the Word says I am. I can do what the Word says I can do. I can have what the Word says I can have. Thank God for the Word of God. Today, I will be taught the uncompromised, the unchanging, the infallible, indestructible seed of the Word of God. My mind's alert and ready to receive God's Word into my heart today. For well, my Bible is God's Word speaking to me. Look at your neighbor to neighbor. The Bible is God's Word speaking to you. Smile real big. Be a doer of the Word, not just to hear the Word. All right. Wave the Word around little this morning. Praise God. Amen. Man, we could go home right now and say we had church this morning. Hey. So powerful when you get into praise and worship. I'm going to talk a little bit about that when I get into my message this morning. We're going to continue the subject of the walk of faith. And we find out in Habakkuk and Galatians and Romans and Hebrews, the just shall live by faith. I said the just shall live by faith. Say, I, I shall, live shall live by faith. I shall live by faith. There's no other way to live. So we need to get a revelation of faith and how it works in our life. I remember when I had my stroke here. Matter of fact, it be this August eight years ago. Can you believe that? Eight years ago this August. And right after I had that stroke, got home, and I was getting ready to preach on Sunday morning and on that Saturday night. Uh, Holy Spirit just, I mean, my whole body just began to shake. And he spoke to my heart and said, teach my people faith. Amen. Teach my people faith. Amen. As I began to go down the last eight years and realize the importance. I've always known faith is important. You can't get saved without faith. You can't please God without faith. But the more you get an understanding of it, the more you realize how important it is to your everyday life and understanding what, how things come is by faith, how we live is by faith, how we stay saved is by faith, how we walk in the goodness of God by faith, how we walk in God's healing by faith, prosperity by faith. Everything operates by faith. Amen. I said everything operates by faith. And Faith is a supernatural law. It's a supernatural law. Just like gravity is a natural law. Every time I drop this Bible, which way is it going to go? Down. It's going to go down. I don't care how many times you do it. You can say, well, I believe it ain't going to fall. I believe it. It'll do it by Because the gravity is a law. It works every time. The law of the spirit of faith works every, sing, every single time. And what we do, we judge faith in our lives sometimes because of the things that we've, we've been challenged with. You cannot allow what you've been challenged with to affect what you know is truth regardless of what you're challenged with in your, bi in your body, in your finances, in your family, or whatever you're challenged with, that should not shake your faith. That should never stop you from walking by faith. You don't let somebody else's life change the way you walk by faith. Sometimes people, you know, do, you watch them for years, they do really well, and all of a sudden things happen. And you let that affect you. You say, well, if they can't make it, I sure can't. I made it because Jesus made it. Yes. Keep your eyes on Jesus, not on mankind. That's right. That's right. Because Jesus is the answer. Jesus has already made it. I don't have to try to make it. I said, I don't have to try to make it. So our key, key uh, text is 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 7, 5 says, We walk by faith and not by sight. 
I walk by faith and not by sight. When God began to speak to my heart about walking by faith, I knew I'd been walking by faith, but what he was really telling me and teaching the church, we got to get a deeper revelation of understanding of how faith works. If there's ever a time that you and I need to really understand how faith works, it's now. It's now. Not next week, but right now. Because you need to develop your faith because there are going to be challenges. There's going to be challenges to your faith. Your faith, people try to deceive you. Satan is a deceiver. Just like he came to, just like Jay said, he came to Jesus in Luke chapter 4. And promising him everything, promised him everything he already had. And that's where the devil does. He's a liar and a deceiver. Amen. But we got to continue to walk by faith and not by sight. Our part is to believe. Our part is to believe and say what God says about our situation. Let's go to uh, Hebrew. I mean, um, Mark chapter 11 first. Mark chapter 11. Just stay with me this morning. Praise God. Say, I'm living by faith. There's a song out we sing sometimes. What we sing it here or not? Living by faith. That's all I know. That's, that's all I developed, living by faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. We'll do the rest later on. Mark chapter 11, verse 22 says this. And Jesus answered and said to them, How faith in God. Now notice he had just cursed a fig tree. And the next day they walked by that fig tree and they, th they told Jesus, Hey, that tree died. Like they're surprised. Like Jesus would be surprised. He called that tree dead. He called it dead and it died. And the disciples were saying, did you know that died? That fig tree died? And Jesus said, I am totally surprised. <laughs> now that's where a lot of Christians are. You get totally surprised when they see God work. That really surprised me I got my miracle. That surprised me how God worked in my finances. Nothing should ever surprise you when you're operating in faith. Amen. Faith is an expector. Faith ex expects things to happen good in your life. Amen. So we've got to keep the spirit of faith working all the time in us. He said, and Jesus answered, have faith in God. Have faith in God, not in, in a person, not in a thing, how the God kind of faith. How faith like God has it. That's what he's saying here. Have faith like God has it. How faith like God has it. We have the God kind of faith living on the inside of us. Romans 12, 3 says, we have been given the measure of faith. When we got born again, we got a measure of faith. But once we got the measure of faith at the birth, new birth, then we got to develop that faith. We develop that faith by meditating in the Word of God. We find in Joshua 1, it says, meditate in the Word of God. How often? Amen. Day and night, just not on Sunday. It didn't say meditate just on Sunday or Wednesday. Meditate in the Word of God day and night. So when you're challenged with something, immediately your mind should be renewed so strongly to the Word of God, immediately you have a scripture. Immediately. That's why Paul says in Romans 12 too, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. Get your mind renewed to the Word of God. So when you're challenged, when things come against you, whatever it may be, you have a word on it. You, you don't have time to go and, and listen to a tape right. or read a book right. or find a scripture. You've got to know a scripture. 
You're riding down the highway, all of a sudden somebody runs out in front of you, you better know what to say. <laughs> Quickly. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. Amen. Now, how many know that we are challenged? How many have been challenged this past week? We're all challenged pretty much in some area every single day of our life. So whatever we're challenged with, we counterattack that with the word of faith. Jesus said, have faith in God. Then verse 23 says, for surely, this is Jesus speaking, for surely I say unto you, say to this mountain, be removed, be cast to the sea, does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things he says will come to pass. Believe the things he says, you've got to believe what you say. When you speak the things, believe what you say. Say to the mountain, be removed. But believe that those things he says will be done and he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say unto you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe it, that you receive them and you shall have them. Three times, you got to do three times more saying than the believing. Believing once, you got to keep speaking to it. Speak to that situation. Whatever you say. Now, we are today where we are because of what we've been saying. Amen. Now, if you don't like where you're at, change your vocabulary. Change your vocabulary. Change the way you've been talking. Circumstances will try to change your vocabulary. When you're challenged in situations, it'll try to get you to change your vocabulary. But keep speaking the word of God. I'm not moved by what I see. Look with me over here to um, uh, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Thank God for the word. I said, thank God for the word. Now, I, I can thank God for the word. I don't know about you, but I can thank God for the word this morning. I said, I can really thank God for the word. I know what the word's done in my life. I am where I'm at today because of the word of God. Amen. Not just physically, but spiritually. In every area of my life, the church, my family, everything I have today is because of the word. Amen. If I hadn't got in the word of God almost 50 years ago. So I said, that's a long time ago. Not when you get my age. <laughs> Fifth year ago, real quick, real quick. But as I begin to develop over those 50 years, I've seen so many miracles, so many miracles over those years. It's incredible what God's done in my life and in my family over these last 50 years. And you know, God's no respect to a person's. What he's done for me, he'll do for you. And, and you got to just keep speaking the word. You're challenged every day. I'm challenged. You're challenged. But you got to keep speaking the word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, we find here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart even through our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Thank God the inward man is not getting old. The inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Look at verse 18. While we do not look, if I say look, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen. So God's more real than anything. Yes. The outward man is perishing. If we live long enough, if the Lord tarries, we're all going to die. Amen. 
This body is not designed to live forever. But while we're in it, we need to take care of it. While we're in it, we need to live what God's given us through faith, live the good life. We find in Ephesians 2.10, live the good life. How are you living this morning? Living the good life. Why? Because as I said before, he's already walked ahead of us, paving the way. Already took care of the issues for us. You know, he's already gone ahead of us and take care of every problem that you'll face tomorrow. So when you face a problem, you ought to say, you can't bother me because Jesus then took care of you. And when the devil harasses you in your mind, you need to say, hey, you can't bother me. You've been whipped 2,000 years ago. You've been whipped 2,000 years ago. That's why you got to get your mind when you to identify with who Christ is on the inside of you. Identify with who you really are in Christ. There's been many times I've been challenged in my body over the years, but I had to speak to my body to line up with the word of God. There, there's times, even though there's times that you don't feel like it, you don't feel good, you have pain in your body, don't let that persuade you not to live by faith Amen. or stop speaking the word of God over your life. Because at one time or another, we've all have been challenged with some type of sickness or disease. But he is eternal. God is an eternal God. Look with me here at... Uh, Where do I want to go here? I think it's Romans chapter 4. Maybe not. I had it written down here somewhere. Anyway. Praise God anyhow. Remember when the children of Israel came out, all the challenges they had, the word says they, they did not mix faith with what they had heard. You can sit here week in, week out, year in, year out, year after year, and never grow one inch because you haven't mixed any faith with it. Amen. That's, right. That's why the children of Israel struggled because they didn't mix faith with what they had heard. You need to mix faith with what you hear this morning. Amen. The Word of God. Mix faith with it. That's why it's important for you to be in church, that's why it's important for you to read your Bible. Mix faith. When you read the Bible, you've got to mix faith with it. Yeah. Mix faith with it. Because it did not profit them. It would not profit them anything because they did not mix faith with it. Faith is a key ingredient. Now, how many of you would love to have a big, nice chocolate cake and no sugar in it? I pray for you, Tim. Nice chocolate cake with no sugar. Now, that would be healthier for you, but it would be so bland. It would be so bland. So I fixed with chocolate cake. I want some sugar in it. Amen. Amen. How about fixing pineapple cake with no pineapple in it? <laughs> You've got to mix faith in everything. Are you hearing me this morning? Amen. I said you got to mix faith with everything we do. Protect your faith. Protect your faith. You'll need a miracle one day, and you need to protect your faith and, and develop your faith to be strong faith. Strong faith. That you won't waver when things happen. When the disciples was walking with Jesus time and time again, they faltered because they, Jesus was putting, putting them on the spot, wanting them to take their faith. You operate in your faith. You deal with a storm. You deal with, a, with the ocean. You deal with a demon. Jesus said, you need to build strong faith. He didn't come here to do it all for you. That's why he walked through the four gospels, teaching his disciples, they've got to take charge. They got to take charge. We have to take charge. He gave you and I authority to 
to tread upon serpents and scorpions, and none of these things had hurt us. Luke 10, 19. We got to take charge. Amen. Look with me over here to Jude. That's close to Revelation. Maybe that'll help you. Let's look over here at Jude, Jude chapter, I mean, in one chapter right here. <laughs> Let's look at Jude verse 3. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith. Contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. Webster says contingent means to, to fight, to strive for, to assert strong faith. And we find in 2 Timothy, 1 Timothy 6, 12, fight the good fight of faith. You got to fight the good fight of faith every day you get up. Every day you get up. Fight the good fight of faith. Be strong in faith and in the power of his word. There will always be things that will come against your faith. Always be things, not negative, not speaking, but it's going to happen. Things are going to come against your faith. You can change those situations by faith. I said you can change those situations by faith. Like I said earlier, if you don't like the way you're living, change it. If you don't like the way some things going in your marriage, change it. Hello. Take first uh, Corinthians, the 13th chapter, and read that as a couple every day. Read that every day as a couple. It'll change your life. It'll change your life. You don't need to go out and pay $500 for somebody <laughs> to give you counsel. I'll give you counsel. Read 1 Corinthians 13. Give me 300. <laughs> I'll cut the price $200. <laughs> but see, the reason Christians are still struggling, as I said earlier, you've got to mix faith with it. You've got to mix some faith with it. Mix some faith with it this morning. Amen? I said mix some faith with it. You must mix Hebrews 4 2. That's what I was looking for. Earlier. Hebrews 4 2. You must have faith to hear and to act on the Word of God. Mix faith with it, or you listen to it. See, I, I, I always want to please, please, please the Father. Anybody here want to please the Father? I, 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 I always search my heart out. If there's something that's not right, I won't get it right. I won't get my heart right. I ain't got nothing against nobody. I have no ill feelings against nobody. I have no unforgiveness against nobody. Because I want, I want to please the Father. Does anybody want to please the Father? Amen. I want to please the Father. It says here in Hebrews 11 chapter, in verse 6, six turn there with me please. Hebrews 11 verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is God. He is a reward of those who diligently seek him. Please God. Please God. But without faith is impossible to please God. But without faith, now, how can I be without faith if I have a measure of faith? What he's talking about here is using your faith to work things out of your faith. Using your faith. It, don't, it does not please God when you have a measure of faith and don't operate in it. Now, God's love doesn't change for you. It's like my kids. I love my kids, but they hadn't always pleased me. That was a correction growing up. Because they won't please in me. <laughs> but I, my love never changed for them. And they will tell you probably different. 
but my love would never change for him. But I want to please the Father. I said, I want to please the Father. And without faith, without acting on your faith, using your faith, being a doer of the word of God, you're not pleasing the Father. I said, you're not pleasing the Father. Let's, let's look over here real quickly. The first John chapter five, verse one. You there yet? First John chapter five, verse one. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Everyone who loves him, who begot also loves him who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. But this is the love of God that we keep his word and his word are in no, is not a burden to some. For whatever is born or whoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Your faith overcomes every obstacle in this earth. Every obstacle. Every, I would not be alive today. Many of you would not be alive today if it wasn't for your faith. We've been dead a long time ago. But thank God for faith. A lot of you wouldn't even be married today if it wasn't for your faith. Married couples that are Christian couples will work it out. People that say they're children of God, born again, married couples will work it out. Hello. The grass is not greener on the other side. Thank you for your enthusiasm. You may be seated. In Galatians chapter three, we find out about Abraham, our, our father. We come in Genesis chapter 12, you know, he came out of the earth to Chaldees. He was 75 years old. Sarah, his wife was 65 years old. 10 years difference in age, 75. God said, Abraham, get out of this country and go. Abraham, lived in a time of faith before the law. Amen. Before the law. Abraham was the father of faith. And so he was before the law. He operated in faith. Everything he did was by faith. Let me read you a scripture here in uh, Romans, uh, I mean, uh, Galatians 3, 24. Therefore the law was our tutor or our teacher to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. See, the, the law was a teacher, but we're justified or made right by faith. But after, after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor or under the law. We're no longer under the law. We respect the law. We do the law, but we're not, we're not living our salvation by the law. We live our salvation by the blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 Not by the law. And then it says in the next verse, verse 26, for you are all sons of God. How? Through faith in Christ Jesus, for as many as you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There's not a Jew nor Greek, where there's slave nor free. There's neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ. That solves the issue, racial issues right there. We're all one in Christ. In Christ, if you're born again. If you're born again, we're in Christ by faith. Amen. And then he says here in verse uh, 29, and if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. Am I in Christ this morning? Amen. I said, are you in Christ this morning? Raise your hand. You are Abraham, seed, and then heirs according to the promise. Amen. Heirs according to the promise. Chapter four, verse one says, now 
say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards under the time appointed by the Father. Even so we, say we, we, we when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time has come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. Jesus was born under the law. The law was still in effect through the four gospels. Through the four gospels. He says right here, and when fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoptions as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave. You are no longer in bondage. You're no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Jesus Christ. Amen. We have inherited through Abraham, the father of faith, to inherit everything Christ has for us. Now, if you go back and, and look at the whole, you need to read the Bible sometime, okay? <laughs> go back and read Genesis, especially pick it up in chapter 12, and then see what God did for Abraham. He made Abraham rich. He said, well, I don't live in a place where I could make a lot of money. Abraham didn't live in a place where he could make a lot of money. See, Philippians 4.19 said, My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So my needs are met according to his riches, not according to my salary. If you depend on your salary, that's how you're going to live. You're limiting the power of God if you just depend on your salary. You say, well, I got to make more money to get more. God shall supply. If you do what his word says do, if you're a tither and a giver, God will supply. Yes. Never look at something and say, well, I can't have that because I don't have enough money. I said, never look at something. Never look at a house and say, well, the house is a little too expensive for me. Well, God, God must have fell off the throne. Come on now. That's somebody getting inside of here this morning. Somebody believe in God for a house. Don't let your current salary hinder you from believing what God wants you to have. God can work it out. My wife and I, we are prime examples of things being too expensive. Not, not way out of the ball cart, but a little expensive. How God turned around and make a way for us to get it. Amen. Even one time the bank said we couldn't qualify, but yet we didn't quit. Amen. My wife said, I'm going to call the, the main person in Richmond. See, I'm married to a very aggressive woman. <laughs> but when you know in your heart, you really feel like that belongs to you. Go after it. Have that bulldog tenacity. Amen. Bite down on that word of God, bless God, and don't turn it loose. Say, that's mine. And, and, and you ladies, I love the ladies. You go shopping. You're looking for the cheapest dress you can find. Because, well, I can't afford that. That's what you'll always have then. Don't say, I can't afford that. Say, God will supply me the money to get desires of my heart. Are you home? Or did you go home or are you still here this morning? Amen. 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 Put your faith on it. Yes. Believe God for it. Yes. Don't limit God. Are you hearing me now? Amen. Don't limit God. Now, say, I'm an heir of God, heir of God. Through, Abraham, through Abraham, who is a father of faith. Father of faith. 
Romans, Romans chapter 4. Man, I got to go. Romans chapter 4. I want a little groundwork this morning. But we'll just speed it, put it in third, third gear here. Romans chapter 4. And say it's the time we go verse 17. Now, I've been challenged lately in some areas. And I've been talking to God about some things. I said, now, God, I know your faith works. I know things, nothing's impossible with God. But I'll tell you what it's got, got me to do. I'll just begin to just start digging into the Word of God more so than ever because I don't know anything about faith like I should. There's more we can always learn. I know a lot, but we need to know more. Uh, thank you for your enthusiasm. There's a crowd over here. <laughs> Dig into the Word of God. Learn more about the subject of faith and how it works. Let's look at the, uh, these scriptures here real quickly. Talk about Abraham and Sarah. He was 75 and she was 65. And God said, Abraham, you and Sarah will go have a child. Well, he looks at his body. He looked at her body and said, well, you know, we, we've been trying a long time. I think our time's already passed. See, that's what happens to people sometimes. I think my time's already passed. Is God still alive? Amen. Is God still on the throne? Yes. Is God's word still alive? Yes. Is he the same yesterday, today, and forever? Yes. See God as he is. Take the limits off of him right now. Just take it off of him. It's a new day for you, a new beginning for you. Start believing God like you've never believed God before. See yourself as God sees you. I hope I can get into that this morning. See yourself as God sees you. See, God saw Abraham and Sarah, two people that could have a child. Did he look at the circumstances? Did God look at the circumstances? No, well, they can't have no more children. They're too old. God didn't say that. God said, you're going to have a child. Now, for 25 years, 25, yeah, you've been believing God for 25 days, you've given up. <laughs> 25 years, and every day, he had to look across and see his wife. And every day, she had to look across and see her husband. And what did they see? They saw bodies that was getting older, non-productive anymore in the area of childbearing. But see, we can't look at that. When God says something, I said, when God says something, when, makes you want to run when, you got, when God says something. I said, when God says something, it will come to pass. But you can't doubt, you can't get into negativism and give up on it. So I'm going to look at some scriptures here real quickly. He says here in verse 17, As it is written, I made you a father of many nations, this God speaking to Abraham, in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gave life to the dead. Now what was dead? Their bodies were dead. Their bodies were dead comparing, considering childbearing. Considering childbearing, most women can't have babies. I think I've heard a few up in the late 40s and one or two in the 50s. But that's getting up there pretty good and natural. But he says, he calls those things which do not exist as though they did. What did God do? He called those things that wasn't an operative, was not operating no more. It was over with as if it was still existing. Let, let that sink in here. Now, I've been meditating on this quite a bit later. 
And it's just intriguing to me how two old people and how they felt when God spoke to them, <coughs> spoke to them, you're going to have a child. Matter of fact, Sarah laughed. I probably got hysterical. <laughs> but it changed the laughter into joy and expectation. She didn't laugh long in doubt. She got straightened out real quick. So if you in doubt, don't let it stay there. Repent quickly. He says here, I call those things which be not as though they were. They don't exist as though they did exist. God says they don't exist, but, but they do exist. They don't exist, but they do exist. You got pain in your body, but it don't exist. But it does exist, but it don't exist. Listen to me carefully now. When you have pain in your body, sickness in your body, something more in your body, it exists. But when you go to the Word, it don't exist. And you don't get in denial over it, but you're speaking the Word of God. The Word of God says it don't exist. If God calls it not existing, it don't exist. If God calls the dead to life, yes. it's going to live. Amen. I said it's going to live. Amen. Man, call those things which do not exist, which do not exist as though they did exist. Amen. You're sick in your body, got pain in your body, got food, fever in your body, some disease in your body that exists, but it don't exist. Pastor, how do you know it don't exist when it does exist? Well, I'm going to call it what God calls it. Amen. See, the key, the key word here, and call those things. Call those things. Call those things. Amen. Call those things. Amen. So we've got to call in what God says Amen. and not what other people say. Or thank God for good doctors. But God is the great doctor. Amen. He's the El Shaddai. The God is more than enough. Amen. When he calls it in, when God calls it in, you ever call a prescription in? They, they, the drugstore, they call you, get, prepare your scripture. Right. We've got to dial God up. <laughs> call him. Dial 66. Six. There's 66 six books in the Bible. That's right. Dial it in. Whew. I'm trying not to get into preaching. Verse 18 And who, contrary to hope, the natural, in hope, supernatural, believe. Hope in the natural, but it changes to hope in the supernatural. When it got into the, the believing in the supernatural, things changed. So that he might become the father of many nations according to what was spoken. It was spoken over them. When God speaks a word over you, well, God hadn't spoken a word over me. Have you read your Bible lately? Every time you read your Bible, God's speaking to you. Oh, I wish the Lord talked to me sometime. We'll read your Bible. Yeah. He'll talk to you if you read your Bible. So what was spoke? So shall your descendants be, not being not being weak in faith. So if He says not being weak, you can be weak in your faith. He said, don't be weak in your faith, but you can be weak in your faith. But we're gonna have strong faith. Somebody, say, I got strong faith. faith. We'll say that loud. And, and it's getting stronger every day. He said, and, and not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead. 
Yeah, he looked at it. He looked at it. He knew it was dead, but he didn't take that in consideration. He didn't take that in consideration. You don't take your sickness in consideration over the word of God. Amen. If God spoke it, if it's in the word, then I'll have it. First Peter 2, 24 says, by his stripes, I am healed. God has spoken that over me. If God's spoken that over me, then I am healed. Amen. Regardless of how I feel, or what I'm dealing with, what I'm going through, or you going through, we are healed. God has spoken that to me. Yes. By stripes, I am healed. Amen. And I've been weak in faith. He did not consider his own body, already dead, which since he was a, about a hundred, a hundred years old. Now see, I think God got us to a place here wanting us to realize this is supernatural. This, this, is, this isn't just a chance that something swam through, got through. <laughs> it's coming along. You're getting there. Because there won't nothing there to swim with. Hello? A <laughs> hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's room See, they said it was dead. They said it was inoperative. They couldn't have children no more. But God said, you're going to have a child. And for 25 years, they had to walk with that. For 25 years, they had to walk in the path. And God had already walked ahead of them, paved the way for 25 years. What God was saying was, when you get to a certain place, in your walk of faith, then I'll deliver. Amen. There is a delivery coming. If, <laughs> ooh, when, you, when, you, when you walk by faith, you keep walking because you're about to give birth to something. And the delivery day could be today or it could be tonight as it could be tomorrow. But I'm calling it in now. I want to deliver now. Just like Tiffany Holloman, she's home this morning having contractions. She's having contractions. She's home now waiting to give delivery. I mean, she, she's wobbled around here for a few weeks. You can tell she's expecting. You got some people walking by faith, you would never know it. Because a mouth would never expose your pregnancy. Let your mouth expose your spiritual pregnancy. Amen. What do you mean, Pastor? Saying, I got it. Amen. Somebody said, when are you going to get it? I said, I'm expecting. I said, I am expecting. <laughs> you, you might have to get to way down the road. He might get a little heavy on you. But say, it's, it's due date. It's due date. It's time for me to have my baby. My miracle. What I'm believing God for. It's time for me to have it now. You might have to walk a little funny for a while. But got you expect us turned on. Amen. Hundred years old. Amen. Sarah, ninety years old. Amen. They walked that path that God laid out ahead of them for twenty-five years. Amen. God didn't tell them it was going to be twenty-five. Right. All He told them, "You gonna have a baby. Amen. You gonna have a baby." They didn't know when. And they kept walking, and they kept getting older. Walking, getting older. But the baby was growing. When you believe in God for something, remember, the baby is growing. The baby of miracles, financial miracles, healing is growing. 
on the inside of you. Amen. 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 My God, somebody ought to shout or something this morning. Faith has a call to it. Faith has a call to it. Call those things which be not as though they were. I got to do that because, see, that's what God says in me. He sees that. He's called me blessed. He's called me healed. He's called me whatever all the word that has available to me. He's called me all the word. He's called it to me. He's called all good things to me. He's called my house to me. Called my car to me. See, I don't own anything. It all belongs to God. I'll give him credit for everything. I don't have, I didn't have enough talent to be where I'm at today. Talent did not get me here. I was not a professional speaker. Matter of fact, I didn't want to talk in front of nobody. Years ago, young boy, very shy. But all that changed. And see that shyness in the natural change when you get a little alcohol in you. But then when you get saved, you get the Holy Ghost in you. The Holy Ghost will stir you right up. It'll push you in places you've never been before. It'll bless you like you've never been blessed before. Stand there with me this morning. I'm going, to, I'm going to read these last two verses of Scripture while you're standing. We're closing. Verse 20 says that Abraham did not waver the promises of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, being full of confidence, giving glory to God, giving glory to God. Everyone say glory. Glory. Giving glory to God. What happened was there, he had the faith, but when he started giving glory, the baby came. What's the glory? Praise. Praise. When he started praising God, the baby came. Paul and Silas, 16th chapter of Acts, they were beaten with rods, an inch of their death, put in stocks and chains. A dungeon because they were preaching the gospel. But what did they do? They began to pray. But notice this when they began to pray, nothing changed. But when they slipped over into praise, the jail broke open. When you when you when you begin to slip over into praise, some things gonna break loose for you. When you begin to praise God, things happen. We haven't really got that revelation of praise yet. We want to sing a little song, clap our hands, and go home. I walk around my house, I have to praise God. Giving God praise. Paul and Silas, when they prayed, nothing happened. But when they begin to praise, got God's attention, he shook the earth, and the door of the jails came unlocked, flew open. They flew open because he was praising God. You want things to happen in your life? Walk by faith. While you're walking by faith, the journey, we're walking by faith, the path God laid out for us. Abraham, I'm giving God glory. I'm praising God. And then when it got to a certain point, the baby came. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, the baby came. The baby came. But you got to start doing some praises. Before you got saved, you out there, out there at Honky Tonk, Saturday night, nightclubs, singing, spitting all over everybody. 
falling all over everybody. Get in church and we got to teach you all over again how to sing. Church is a place of excitement. A church is a place of praise and worship. Church is a place of expecting things to happen. I'm expecting things to happen. I'm getting ready to give birth to some things. You may need a new kidney, new heart, new prostate, guys. Whatever you need, women. You're getting ready to give some birth to it. Don't give up on your faith. Don't stop believing God. Speak the word of God. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Hallelujah. 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 Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. God, is good to me. God is good to me. I'm walking. I'm, walking. I'm, pregnant. I'm pregnant. Getting ready to give birth. Getting ready to give birth. To my miracle. To my miracle.